Hi everyone, welcome to Stika Virtual Travel Agency. Let's not delay and start our journey right now. But at first, can I ask a couple weird questions? Do you know how our distant ancestors defecated? What did the toilets and settlements of primitive men look like and were equipped with? And do you know when did the human build the first toilet? If the answer is no, then you are in the right place. Welcome to the Toilet History Museum. During our tour, you will learn a great deal of historical detail that has often been released during school history lessons due to the delicate nature of the topic. However, it's worth noting that museums devoted to the toilet subjects have in fact already existed in Great Britain, India, Singapore, South Korea, United States, Germany, Austria, and Japan. We start with the simplest structure that people used for the natural needs. A layout of a hand dryer toilet. Then we can see the reconstruction of the upper part of the ancient Egyptian toilet, under which the sandbox was placed. Next, we have a model of the world's first flush toilet. It was found in the tomb of Prince Linhao in China from the 2nd century BC. Now, let's take a look at this fancy object and try to guess what it is and what kind of animal it represents. You have a few seconds to think about it, or you can stop the video and think about the answer. If you thought of a hippo or a cat or perhaps a dog, then unfortunately that's not the right answer. This is a replica of a portable man's toilet in the form of a tiger. It was found in China and there is a reason for this choice of animal. When in ancient times tigers began to attack settlements in China, it was not enough for the emperor just to kill them. He wanted to humiliate them and thus forced to make portable toads in the shape of a tiger. Next for your attention, it's not just a toilet, but a toilet throne from ancient Rome, as it was in the 3rd century BC. And there is another replica of a toilet fragment from ancient Rome. This mysterious object was used by our ancestors instead of a toilet paper. An interesting fact, it was used by everyone in Rome because it was standing in a public toilet. These toilets became a gathering place, first for locals and later for all emperors. And by the 2nd century BC, there were 144 such toilets in Rome. Here we have a model of a sewer that was built four centuries earlier in Rome. In the picture you can see the construction of the aqueduct, which is the water supply to the settlements. Now it's time for ancient hygiene. This yellow object is a strigal, a special scraper for removing oil and dirt from the skin. On the screen you can see hygiene products before the appearance of soap, such as ash, soap grass, white clay, oil and sand. 
We have slowly moved on to the edge of the plug in Europe and complete unsanitary conditions. In this time appear plug doctors and their creepy costume looks so for a reason. It protected them from the pathogenic smell, which makes them the prototype of modern respirators. The beak or its tip was filled with strong smelling herbs, which made breathing easier in the constant stench of the plug. And if the doctors protected themselves with terrifying masks, ladies could only protect their fur coats from moths in the toilet. After all, the toilet smell and unsanitary conditions could not withstand even moths. Here is one example of a toilet in a castle. It was quite dangerous, and there were even two accidents when two noblemen fell, and unfortunately, didn't survive the fall. To avoid falls, a new profession was created – toilet man. This man walked around crowded places and offered his services. The toilet looked like a bucket with a curtain with which people were covered by a toilet man. Interesting fact, it was not easy to become a toilet man, you had to learn to be one and even pass the exam. All in all, Leonardo da Vinci wanted to revolutionize the toilet world. He created the first flush toilet in Europe and even invented a lid for the toilet in 1516. He created it for the King Francis I. You can see what it looked like in those days. But the king did not appreciate the gift of Leonardo da Vinci. The king was a fan of a toilet throne. He even welcomed the most important guest sitting on it. And unfortunately, Leonardo da Vinci gave up on the idea of a flush toilet. If you think a toilet throne is weird, take a look at the trunk toilet. It was a nasty find for the pirates, who thought it was a treasure chest. Just imagine their faces when they opened that trunk. We are going back to the inventors. John Harrington tried to invent the flush toilet but he didn't dare to patent it, and the idea of a flush toilet, unfortunately, has faded away. But we are getting immersed in the atmosphere of the ladies' corners of the 17th century. Just look at the variety of toilets used by the ladies in those days. Now we want to tell you about fashion trends and their consequences. Since puffy dresses were popular in those days, hairstyles had to be as big as possible, and there were a few problems with that. Such buffet hairstyles took a long time to prepare and ladies had them on their heads for weeks. And in times of unsanitary conditions, these hairstyles were the perfect home for fleas. And even men gave their ladies flea traps instead of flowers. While the men wore only wigs. Is that really fair? Recalling John Harrington's attempt to create a first flush toilet in Europe, 100 years later Alexander Kamen patented Harrington's invention. The seed trap was invented by Kamen to retain water permanently within water tank, thus preventing silver gases from entering in buildings. Next, we meet Henry Mo, who during cholera epidemic suggested using a bucket of soil for natural needs. 
and throwing all the waste into a pit after using it. The inventors of flush toilets in the 19th century are all there waiting for us. First, let's talk about Thomas Twyford, who started two companies producing sinks and ceramic toilet bowls. And in 1884, he created a revolutionary flush toilet. It was a monolithic ceramic toilet that stood firmly on a pedestal and he called it Unitas, from Latin for unity. Now we are going to talk about Thomas Crapper, who founded Thomas Crapper & Co. in 1861 to sell and install plumbing products. He also improved the flush toilet. The pedestal on which the toilet was placed was larger and covered the water pipe. He also raised the flush box higher and started a system of a pulling a rope to flush the water. We also want to tell you what the toilets of prisons were like at different times, but at first, let's have a look at this prisoner. Let's start with ancient times and here is an example of prison of Rome, the oldest building in the city that is still standing. The prison has a toilet with a drain in the pit. In medieval times prisoners used buckets, on which they had to eat afterwards. Speaking of the 19th century, we want to show you a prison in Philadelphia, which at that time was considered to be one of the most comfortable prisons in the world. The prison had a sewage system, and at that time, when President of the United States, Jackson, used the night potty, each prisoner had his own private toilet. In the 23rd century, most prisons have a simple flush toilet in each room. On the screen, you see the complete development of the toilet in the 19th century. Now let's talk about toilet in different transports. Toilet on sailing ships were placed in the bow. The toilet had the form of a balcony or it was a hanging basket where people did their needs. Furthermore, the first toilet system were invented by Bram and the Royal English Front began to use them. The toilet had an open system of flushing into the water. And on the right, you can see what modern ship's toilet looks like. Then we will talk about toilets of the train. In 1865, the first modern toilets in the train were invented. In England, the first wagon with a toilet appeared in 1873. Speaking of our time, most toilets are of the open type, but it leads to pollute of the environment. In Western Europe, almost all open toilets have been removed. And on the right, we see a toilet in a car trailer where bio tools are most often used. Now, it's time to look at the toilet as a work of art, or how Duchamp made a fountain out of a toilet. In 1917, an artist saw a toilet and simply turned it upside down and named it a fountain. Later, his work has influenced on the understanding of pop art, minimalism and conceptual art.
The museum also featured an installation of a toad guillotine. There are also gifts made to the museum. You can see them on the screen. More than one book about toilets is on these shelves. As well as the figureness that started the idea to open this museum. There are about 524 of them, which led the museum to the Guinness Book of Records for the largest collection of toilet-related figurines.